using the Arduino Uno for Boolean design. So I'm going to just kind of get you going. I don't necessarily want to go through all of this. This has got six simulations in Tinkercad. And that's where you ought to kind of navigate to. It's your Tinkercad account. Why? Because Arduinos are supported. A simulation of Arduinos is supported using Tinkercad. And you can build circuits up and test them using the code that you load into the Arduino plus the circuitry that you add to the Arduino to get a particular function. Okay. And we will use this for the rest of the class. This is uh, getting start, basically getting started. And if you go to this website here, Right, this website here, which is on, uh, is this program is called Blink. Right, uh, you need uh, an LED and a resistor, and then down here where it says circuits, these are basically saying which pin on the Arduino do you have this. A built-in LED. There's a built-in LED. Well, the Uno is the digital pin 13. Right? For some of these other ones, the, this one here is on pin 1. This one's on pin 6, etc. That means that those built-in LEDs, they're already set up to be the de facto LED that will blink for you or you can have an external one. The circuit could look like something like this, where you have a little a, a proto board with an LED and a resistor. Hooked up, you gotta connect power and ground, okay? Gotta know which one's the anode, which one's the cathode, okay? To be able to get it to turn on. 220 is for doing what? Why do you have this resistor in there for uh, an LED? So it doesn't blow up. So we're not applying five volts directly. We want some of the voltage to drop, drop across the resistor. We use that resistor to kind of regulate the current. Okay. So we don't want too much current to go through it. The more current that goes, the more uh, brighter it will be to the point where it you either burn it out or it's reached its maximum illumination. Okay. But you don't want to apply directly five volts there. 220 is a is a good one. You could go higher. Okay. Here's what the schematic looks like. Okay. You review your notes on LEDs as to uh, the orientation of the LED. The nice thing about Tinkercad is if you hover over an, the pin, it'll tell you what no, what uh, is the name of that pin. Okay, but that's what the schematic looks like. Then the code is a combination of these various functions, pin mode, digital write, uh, you got a couple of those to go either right at high or low. There's a delay in here, too, of a thousand milliseconds, which is one second. So it blinks high and then it blinks low. It's got several different sections of this. Now, anything that basically is in the top here from this pin, from this uh, line one all the way down to 23 can be deleted, right? That's just support information about who designed it and how it works. And this right here is also a comment, this double slash. But the first part is the void setup. Okay. And it occurs between these two points. And it says pin mode, LED, built-in, comma, is an output. Okay. You say, well, what about pin 13? 
Well, pin 13 is the same thing as LED built in. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then you have the void loop. By the way, this curly bracket and this curly bracket kind of form the container for the code. That's kind of like the start and stop of the code of that section of the code. And this next curly bracket is the next section of the code to be able to define everything. And the void loop, void loop means that this will loop through indefinitely until you stop the program. It'll go, it says write LED high, wait 100 millis 1,000 milliseconds, write a digital low, wait 1,000 milliseconds, and then repeat the loop. Okay. So these are common setups here for the void setup and the void loop, okay? Uh, sometimes you will see people write in their code, this is a C++. This is a C++ um, setup. It is sort of C++, I'll give them that, except the normal C++ typically doesn't have things like these IOs that are very specific for the Arduino, okay? So I'll give them the C++, but it's customized to be su support the Arduino directly. You could take this code here, right? You could take this code right here, copy it, and paste it down in Tinkercad with an Arduino, hook up this circuit it looks something like this. Now, you don't need the breadboard. Uh, and then what you would have is something that looks like this. And um, it would blink. Here, here's what the code looks like. There, I put the C++ code. Uh, and then I show you this. And then the inside here is the video. It shows you what that guy looks like when you run the simulation. You see this LED down here goes too. And then here's the code. Same code I showed you earlier. So if you built this and put that code in there, you should get this result. Okay. So that would be step one, right? See if you could do that one. Step two is more advanced where you have the same schematic or same code except repeated four times. So let's turn on and off four LEDs, right? By the way, I do have a design problem here. I've mixed and matched 220 ohm and 1K resistors, these all really ought to be 220s, but it works okay with 1K, okay? There's what the code looks like, a little more sophisticated. So in the setup, we say, and oh, by the way, here's where we use, instead of the built-in LED, we actually use pin 13 as an output. And 12, 11, and 10. Okay. That works just as well. And then we write 13, 12, 11, and 10 make high, and 13, 12, 11, and 10 low, and it bounces between these two in the void loop. My preference is to put the curly brackets so I can see them easier. Some people like to kind of hide them but I like to put them so that they're readily available and left justified. That's a personal preference. The next one, uh, let's see, let's turn on. Okay, that's Boolean one. So there's, there's, here's the movie. You hit the start button and they blink.
be there's the code. Okay. The next one, you add some switches to turn on and off. So you have inputs and outputs. Now, this is uh, trivial in that when the switch is turned on or whatever represents a true, the um, LED will turn on. Okay. That's kind of like what that guy does. There's the code for it. So the good news is, okay, so we'll hear we define some constants, right? INT means it is an integer value, right? So all this stuff here are the inputs and outputs, and they are linked to a specific pin, right, that are on there. This helps uh, simplify the code because then we're passing variable names versus actual pin names, pin numbers. Okay. We define inputs, integer button state one, through button state four. We have button state on pins, and the, we have, so we have the, the pin number and the value. It is a two-page program because it rolls over to the next page. There's the void loop, the start of the void loop. And then it uses uh, the if, the if statement. If this is high, then you turn that on. Else, you turn it off. The if else statement. That's also a C++ thing, right? The if else. The, um, it just does that. It gives the truth associated with both the high state and the low state. Okay. If the button state is high, then you turn on the LED. Otherwise, um, if you turn this, if this is high, then you make this high. Else, you turn off the LED. Now, you don't check to see is it low? You only say, well, if it's high, then we go high. Otherwise, it's going to go low, right? Because there's only two legitimate states for that guy. And the same thing happens for all four LEDs. Okay. If I was going to ding myself, I would say turn LED one off, turn LED one on to be more descriptive in the description, in the uh, comment section. Okay. But it results in having to have longer amount of code to do this. So if I look at this, this should show it. They're all at logic one to, to begin with. So you got to turn the switch on to get a zero. Then you turn on <clears> each <throat> individual switch to be able to turn on and off the LED. Right. So you don't show the code for it, but that was on the previous page. The next one is to really do this um, now. We have five LEDs, five LEDs, and we want to express this as a BCD, a binary to BCD output. So binary is four digits. You have four switches, but the output has got to be five digits, right? And you can think of this as each one of these is a two to the zero, two to the one, two to two, two to three, two to four, right? That's the weight of these LEDs. But it's got to be in BCD code. BCD code means it goes from zero to nine for the first digit, and then zero to one in the second digit, 
so that the highest uh, decimal value will be 15. Now we'll express it as a binary value, but it'll be really the BCD equivalent of that, right? And will you make use of something called an AND? The AND is the two ampersands that are together, right? That'll be the next trick. By the way, uh, I said here, the circuit is the same as Boolean test two. Not exactly. We added another digit, so this is not quite true. We added one more digit. The input is the same, but the output is a little bit different. Here's the code. And I say this is a brute force approach because every possible state for the inputs maps to an output. There's, there's, if there are 16 possible states from zero to 15, there are 16 outputs, okay? Where each display, there we read our input states, Then we, here's our first output. And oh, by the way, it says if Boolean state is low and Boolean state two is low and Boolean state three is low and Boolean state four is low, if that button state is low, then the output would be all zeros. That's why it's brute force. There's no interpretation of the data other than to say, if everything, and I end everything together, if I have this result, then this will be the output. We still use an if statement. We still use an if statement, but there's no else to it. Just if this is true, okay? If this is true, if this is true, And it requires way more code. Now, you could say, hey, uh, maybe you need to put the, include the else, right? You know, somebody might, might find issue, take issue with the code. But it does work for this design. But there's, there's the final one. And it requires, let's see, it, sh it shows all the BCD code, but the LEDs on the left is a 10 digit when it's zero, the value, and it goes from zero to nine or less. But when it's one, the value is 10 or greater. What that's trying to say is this is the max value of the display where this would be 15. Okay, the value of that 15 from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 15. Okay, and then here's the simulation for it. Takes a little bit of time to go through it all, but you can see they can increment the uh, inputs to be able to get everything that you want. This is brute force, so every possible state is covered. All right. The next one says brute force is okay, but that resulted in 155 lines of code. Now, that's nowhere near the max capacity of the uh, fight of the uh, Arduino, but you should use the code you need, not the code that, all the code that's available, right? So how can we reduce it? We can reduce it by trying to determine 
interpret the binary code into BCD using Boolean expressions for each of the five outputs. How do I figure out what that first LED is supposed to be? If I know the four inputs, can I figure out a way to be able to come up with a Boolean expression and then implement the Boolean expression to be able to test to see if that particular Boolean case is true? Okay. You can use the, uh, I didn't show you this. Uh, you can use this language reference, right? By the way, the language reference, to, so there's different uh, types of data. Uh, but the Boolean expressions are down here. So there are the three possible Boolean expressions you have. You don't have a whole lot, right? And you say, well, gee, I can't, I can't make an exclusive or out of this. Well, yeah, you can. You know, refer back to your 112 class for the Boolean expression that you need to make a um, exclusive or exclusive nor, right? It's possible. Uh, what was the other thing here? Hmm. Here are the three. Here are the three functions for digital I.O. A read, a write, and a pin mode. Here are the three Boolean functions for Boolean operator. A not, an and, and the or. Okay. From that, you should be able to create everything that you need. Okay. The, the work you have to do to go from binary to BCD, where you have these five digits to find, is non-trivial. Okay. The first digit, the LSD, the least significant digit, is whatever A is. And it goes, so it goes 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, et cetera. The other ones, everything here is solved for using a carnal map, a four input carnal map. So you look at the one, if you look at this one here, this is for the LSD. This is for SD1, SD2, and SD3, which are the intermediate digits. And then the most significant digits all the way over here on the right. Remember in a carnal map, you highlight the uh, twos, the ones, the twos, the fours, the eights, the sixteens, where there's a one. And then you or these guys together, right? So A, or the LSD becomes just A. If I look at it, what is true about that encircled group of ones? Does C, D, C and D change values? Yep, they can be either both ones, both zeros, one high, the other one high, low, et cetera. So it's, it's not significant to include anything related to C and D. How about A and B? Well, B can be either high or low. A is the only one of significance, and it's got to be high. So the Boolean for the LSD is A. Okay. The Boolean for SD1 is includes um, two ones and four ones, right? So the lower the number... Right. If I had just one one in one place, it would require all four inputs to be used. When it's two, I got to use three inputs. When it's four, I've got to use two inputs. When it's uh, eight, I only have to use one input. So that's why SD one is like this: B bar CD and B D bar. 
And you should be able to walk through that to see what's what. Okay. How does this right here map? And what is the Boolean expression for this? Okay. This was covered in the during circuit reduction time in the 112 class. A proof to you, you can use for yourself is build the Boolean up in multi-sim and verify that you get the same value, right? I could build this up. I could build this up and use the logic converter too, right? I could build this up and use the logic converter, put in, implement that code, verify that I get the same Boolean expression when I simplify, okay? But that's what you'd have to do. Each output has its own Boolean. So you get all five Booleans defined based upon those um, Boolean inputs, right? That's a little more advanced, but that's how you would, could possibly do it. The code, on the other hand, versus 155 lines of code is greatly reduced I still have the same start. When I hit the void loop, uh, I have Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, and Y5. Y1 is the uh, least significant digit. So it's just A output. So that's be this one way over here on the right. This should be Y1. And then this right here is all the rest of the code. So Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5, or Y5 is the most significant digit, which is way over here on the left. Okay. You define the Booleans. And then let's see, if I come back, let's go back. Well, this guy here, if I look at the Boolean expressions for this, uh, if uh, button state four is low, then this is low. If button state four is high, then this is high, okay? That is just the button state four is the, the level of A is another way to say it. What is A, All right? If it's high, then this LED is high. If it's low, then this LED is low. The next one is implementing B bar C D or B D bar. So let's look at the expression. So if B bar, if button one three is low and Button state two is high, and button state one is high, right? Three, two, one is B, C, D. So zero, that would be correspond to this guy, then a one and a one. So this whole top part of the expression solves that part of the Boolean. And then these double lines here say, or if button state three is is a uh, high and button state one is low, that's this part of it. Then write a high. Okay, and I put for your um, understanding, I put this a uh, comment. X, 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 1, X. Where this says, I don't care about these. Other, X means you don't care about the other ones. Those are going to be covered by something else. It's only going to cover this second digit. It'll only take care of this first, the second LED here. To go low, if that's not true, and there's an else statement here, then it'll be low. Okay, it'll be high or it'll be low. And that fully defines it then. Right. 
based on using a coronal map as a circuit reduction technique to be able to get every possible output by using a Boolean expression. If I hadn't have done the Boolean re re um, reduction, I'd have to implement every possible true or false, which would still been more lines of code. It might be equivalent to the 155 or maybe more, right? These other ones here now go C, D bar, and D, C, uh, B, B bar, C bar, D. Uh, and then the last one is B, D, or C, D. Okay. And you can see the Boolean expression where the ampersand is used for Andy. And the double lines are used for oaring. Okay, just to translate what you've got there. All right. This results in 67 lines versus 155. Way more streamlined. Harder to do, probably. Right? Higher level of skill set required to be able to write that. But uh, it's cleaner. Right, it's a cleaner implementation. That makes sense. And then here's the simulation for it, maybe. Well, I did add a voltmeter too to the input. So I can verify that when the switch is on, what value do I have? So when the switch is off, I get five volts. When the switch is on, I get zero volts. So this could lead to a misunderstanding of how this thing functions because we get the really the wrong input circuitry when we want to do this. We think an on should be high and an off should be low. But we still only have 67 lines of code. Okay. Final slide, it really says, well, how about if I change this, right? The code stays exactly the same. Code stays exactly the same. And I, but if I change the circuit now, so that when it's on, it's high, and when it's off, it's low, this would be what I would have and it would produce exactly the same results as a previous one, but the input would match my understanding of what on and off is for a switch. Okay.